In 2019, YouTube was caught violating the Child Online Privacy Protection Act, or COPPA. Since settling, YouTube has enacted new policies that are meant to serve as a smokescreen so they can dodge responsibility and scapegoat creators. As such, for my own protection, it is my obligation to advise you that this video is not aimed at children. My target audience is not children. Parental discretion is advised. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and welcome back to Sentinel Reviews. Our two-part look at Masterful concludes with part two, Terror of the Master, also released in January 2021, written by Trevor Baxendale, read by John Colshaw. Once again, I will attempt to avoid spoilers, but just in case, there is a blanket spoiler warning in place. You have been warned. And Terror of the Master is an exclusive to the limited edition release of Masterful. So if you only got the standard edition, this is not part of that release. And Terror of the Master is okay. Um, you know, I can't, I, I don't feel particularly strongly for it. I like the idea behind it, you know, this big celebration of the Master. You had this epic story featuring multiple Masters. So I kind of get the desire for Masterful. It's also a way to have the very first Master who debuted, the Roger Delgado Master, um, take part in the celebration. And in that regard, I also like that he was not a part of Masterful. Just because, uh, simply put, I'm not against the idea of recasting. I know some people are, some people aren't. That's not a debate I'm going to have. But of who we've seen so far in audiobooks and stuff... I don't think we've got a good Roger Delgado impersonator yet. And I I would possibly be much more open to the idea if we got one. Which that leads me into... I'll start with the narrator itself because I've never done book reviews before. And I kind of want to, but at the same time, figuring out how I would do it is difficult. Audiobooks actually make the process a little easier because while discussing the plot and the details and what you like and don't like, you can also discuss the narrator themselves. And as I said, this book is read by John Colshaw, who does a fantastic job. I mean, in the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 5, um, Nicholas Briggs, in the making of, praised John Colshaw as one of the UK's greatest impersonators. And on... And an impersonator is not the same thing as being an actor, but Colshaw also shows he is a fantastic actor. He has a really good range. You know, like, his Pertwee's good. Tim Trelor's is better, though. I, I just like Trelor so much more, but his Pertwee is still really good. His Brigadier is phenomenal. His, his Delgado leaves a lot to be desired, and I talked about this when I reviewed Master Thief. Like, just as a comparison... Colshaw also did the audiobook for The Five Doctors target novelization. And I said it there. The way Colshaw does the Delgado Master is the same way he did the first Doctor in The Five Doctors audiobook. Which, but I'm not bashing Colshaw for that impression. Because if this was full cast and everyone had their own role, that would be one thing. You know, and that would be one thing to judge an impressionist on and a performance on but when it comes to doing impressions i am much more lenient on audiobooks because the narrator of an audiobook has so much more to do than an actor in an audio drama and i want to be well heard i'm not bashing either format i'm not bashing either performance for one over the other i'm just saying you know an impression you know you're cast in an audio drama you're playing one part um, possibly some minor background parts, like you hear it in the end credits all the time, other parts played by members of the cast, but you're playing one part. In an audiobook, along with narrating it, you have to play all the parts, which leads to my leniency, you know? Even though one character you do might not be the best, you have to play all the characters, and that's still really impressive. And, you know, like I said, Colshaw, as an actor, as a performer, has a very wide range. And his reading of the prose is really good, too. I want to highlight that as well. Um, because that's one... Because for me, 
audiobooks are somewhat of a challenge. Not always, but what's a good way to explain it? The first 15 to 20 minutes of an audiobook, again for me, are always the hardest to get through. You know, like so many, like at least three times, I'll have to restart an audiobook at that point because I I'll feel like I I'll have missed so much information and stuff that I have to go back and pick it up again. But once you, but once I get past that first fifteen to twenty minutes, it starts picking up and I start becoming much more engaged. And Cole Shaw as a narrator is actually really engaging. I didn't really have to restart Terror of the Master like I normally do. You know, compared to, say, At Childhood's End, Sophie Aldred, her performance as the characters in that was great, especially the 13th Doctor, but Ace, Graham, Yaz, Ryan, the Doctor, and the other characters was great. It was her narrating of the prose when she wasn't, quoting reading the characters lines that really took me out of the story just as a comparison but um and i've talked so much about wow i've talked so much about the format of the audiobook and colshaw's a narrator that i haven't really gotten into the story all that much this is kind of a fairly standard third doctor unit master story there isn't really a lot to say about it the Master finds a creature called the Scabus and allies with it, and the Doctor and Unit catch on to what's going on and try to stop it. The story is very true to the format of the Third Doctor era, but there are a few interesting twists here. This story takes place after the Green Death, but, you know, so Joe has already left, but before series, el series season 11, so... Sarah Jane has not showed up yet. The Doctor is working on the Who-Mobile, an alternative to Bessie that showed up in... I think it was only one story in Season 11, maybe one or two. It was either Invasion of the Dinosaurs, Planet of the Spiders, or both of them. Um, I, I have not seen Series 11 yet. Series... Season 11 yet! So, yeah, I know very little about the Who-Mobile. Um, but, and you know, there is, because this is the Pertwee era, there is a political message with a green, um, meaning on it. This one is, this, with a green, there, that, there is a political green message to it. Um, you know, this one is about carbon emissions and pollution, um, which is what the Scabus is. It feeds on toxic gases. So the Master devises a plan to use the Scabus to, you know, devour Earth's pollution and take control of the world, of course. But this story's biggest problem is that it's really slow. It's a little over three hours. I think it's 3.25 hours, which is not bad for an audiobook, you know, which... The shortest ones I've heard are usually about six hours. Um, so yeah, the length is not a problem, but this story feels long. This The pacing is really bad. Especially in a lot of the inner rim scenes, you know, like after a big event, um, the Doctor and Unit will confer. And those scenes really dragged, and it's hard to talk about what happens because a lot of those... Um, slower scenes, they were very in one ear, out the other. I hardly retained any of it. But, which sort of leads to my, um, you know, only ranking it as okay. I'm, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would still recommend the limited edition of Masterful, and because I do think including Delgado is a nice touch, and the book itself isn't bad, it's just Okay. And that's really all I have to say about it. There's not as much to say. Um, Terror of the Master is okay. It's a love letter to the Unit era, the Third Doctor era. And the Delgado Master in particular gets a lot of great moments in this story and shines. But unfortunately, it, the, the plot moves along at a snail's pace. And like I said, those scenes of downtime that I'm calling it, not nothing to do... 
with the um, fan film downtime, just, you know, lulls between the action. But those scenes of downtime really drag the story down and feel more like padding. I'm going to give Terror of the Master a 6 out of 10. But those were just my thoughts. Did you get the limited edition of Masterful? Have you heard Terror of the Master? What are yours? Start a conversation in the comments below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, click the bell next to subscribe to get notifications when I upload, and in the description box below, you'll find the link to my Twitter where you can follow me and get updates on the channel. Next week, we will finally be starting the digital bundle Dark Shadows, the Quentin Collins collection with The Skinwalkers. This is Sir Jedi Sentinel, and I'll see you guys next time.